Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. I know it has been a bit of a time period before my last battle report, but let's hope this one is worth the wait, I guess. Um, so, oh, yeah, so this is a 2,000 point battle report, Dwarves versus Night Stalkers, and the scenario is Dominate. So my Dwarf army isn't too terrible from what you've seen, but a little bit different. Uh, I still run my two Hordes Earth Elementals, uh, one Horde Elite, one Horde Vicious. Um, I'll definitely not be doing the Elite and Vicious in the future. I think it's just a little expensive. I'll probably instead do like the um, re-roll one hit and re-roll one miss items instead. Um, new new to my list is I have a Regiment of Brock Riders. They have the Pathfinder item. A uh, Regiment of Iron Guard. Dogs, Two-Handed Weapon Upgrade, and Brew of Courage. A Troop of Iron Clad. Two Flame Belchers. Two stone priests, uh, one with the inspiring amulet and one with the amulet that lets you have two uh, spells in a turn. Uh, Ranger captain, wings of honey maze, and a berserker lord on Brock with blade of the beast slayer. For my opponent's list, he's running a knight stalkers. Um, he is running three hordes of fiends. These are the uh, monstrous cavalry selection for. Uh, Night Stalkers, uh, one of the units has Pathfinder, one of the units has Dwarven Ale, and I'm not sure if the last unit had anything or not. Uh, he has one Regiment of Fiends, uh, a Legion of Bloodworms with the Brew O Strength, two Horrors uh, with Bane Chant, the Horrors are the uh, Surge little caster guys, uh, two Planar Apparitions, and two Shadow Hulks. <coughs> so... This is just a look of the board uh, before we start deploying. Um, as a side note, uh, this was actually a free mat from Table War Game. Uh, not free like for like sponsorship, but um, the Table War does a thing where if you are a store and you prove it to them, they will give you a mat for the cost of shipping. So I told that to my local store owner. <coughs> who took advantage of that system and wrote my name, or, or <coughs> excuse me, used my email address uh, when he was signing up for it. And so uh, that didn't get me anything free, but eventually that store owner uh, made an order. And the second he made a purchase, they said, I can, the, the Table War people contacted me and said, you've earned a free mat if you pay shipping, uh, pick one out, and we'll ship it to you. I was like, cool, so this, this is what we got. Um, I actually gave this to some other people, but so just just plugging that as an idea if you if you uh, know a store owner who wants a mat. And just the other side. Uh, so deployment for deployment's sake. Uh, from left to right, my opponent, uh, three hordes of fiends, the ones that look like, um, uh, like uh, what do you call them, centipedes kind of coming out of the ground. Those are the Pathfinder ones, the ones in front of the woods. Uh, so next to them, you have the Horde of Bloodworms, or Legion of Bloodworms. Behind the Legion of Bloodworms, that's a Planar Apparition. And in front of the Legion of Bloodworms, that's a, um, what are those things called? Sorry. Shadow Hulks. All right. That's, that's a hard one for me to remember for some reason. Behind the Shadow Hulk is one of the Horrors. And then towards the middle of the table, there's a Shadow Hulk, another Horror, a Planar Apparition, and then his Regiment of Fiends. So, uh, from my deployment, from right to left, uh, Greater Earth Elemental, Horde of Earth Elementals, um, there'll be a Stone Priest in there somewhere, hiding out. Um, this is a little clustery, but uh, Troop of Ironclad in front of the Regiment of Iron Guard. Uh, two Flame Belchers. In this game, they're called Flame Belchers. That's right. Uh, then my other Horde of Earth Elementals, uh, Greater Earth Elemental, uh, behind them will be a stone priest. And way on the far end, ranger captain next to the greater earth elemental. Um, and then the regiment of berserker brocks that are happen to just be on beetles. Um, and then next to them, the berserker lord. So here's what the table looks like after we deployed. Um, my opponent had the scrying gem and he rolled the uh, highest number. So he had me deploy four um, regiments. So we actually ended up at a pretty much of a deployment equivalent number of drops because I had to drop all my extras and then we basically had the same number of things. Uh, and in Vanguard, my Ranger Captain just flies up into the woods. Because why not? 
And here was me attempting to get a action shot of deployment of my new Brock Riders, but it focused on my Earth Elemental instead. Um, this is a little bit better picture, but you get the idea. So, uh, turn one. Turn one goes to my opponent, <clears throat> or turn one, the choice of turn one goes to my opponent, and my opponent takes it. Uh, so he advances as you see here. And on the other side, he advances as you see here. Um, I didn't go into my uh, a strategy here, but my, my intention is to stall and hold in the middle while my fast units come around the right and just try to smash him at one time. So, not not terribly complicated. Uh, Dwarf's turn one, uh, as you can see here, I'm just kind of pivoting in the middle. Uh, and over here, I'm just kind of pivoting and trying to redress my line. That impassable piece of terrain in front of me is fairly cumbersome, so... Just trying to uh, get some movement in. And there's another sign, so I'm coming up as fast as I can along the side with my Ranger Captain and my Brock Riders and my Berserker Lord. And I use some of my surges to help again redress my line and move my shift my shift my line left and, and forward. Yeah. So there's the end of that. Nothing spectacular happens. Turn one. Turn two. Uh, turn two. Um, this is just an action shot of a charge, which will make more sense in the next picture. I just thought it was fun. Um, so you can see that charge there. He sent his regiment of fiends into my trash, or a.k.a. my ironclad troop, <clears throat> which is fine. Uh, everything else just moved, as you can see here. He's just uh, shifting up, um, keeping out of potential surge charge arcs, but just trying to uh, yeah, move up, I guess. He doesn't have any shooting, so he's kind of got to come to me. Uh, and you can see that from the other side. So into shooting, he uses one of his horrors to bane chant his regiment of fiends, and his regiment of fiends only do five damage, but he rolls pretty well twice on the dice. He rolls a seven plus twice. I guess that's you know it's not great. Yeah, it's good, and he gets rid of my troop there. So uh, if we form like that, so you're going to dwarf turn two. A few things happen in here. I am one thing is I actually shift my elementals there at the bottom of the screen to the their left or towards my table edge just to make more room so I can have more of a more of an appropriate battle line anchored on that impassable piece of terrain just kind of hanging out in the water um, I didn't mention it but for the sake of this game that water is just difficult terrain so my uh, elementals are just fine in there um, yep so uh, kind of see it here I charge the horde of fiends with the regiment of iron guard and the horde of um, earth elementals uh, in the shooting phase I surge my greater earth elemental up farther just because he's kind of starting to fall behind and I bane chant uh, my earth elementals so we go into combat, and not surprisingly, that regiment of fiends dies. And I just reform like this. And we look like that. So nothing too exciting yet, but you can see, like I was saying, I'm trying to redress my line in the middle and coming around as quick as I can with those berserkers and the berserker lord. Turn three. Uh, turn three. Um, two charges happen. The horde of fiends at the bottom charge my greater earth elemental by themselves, and his uh, shadow hulk charges my earth elementals up top there. So just another picture of that. Everything else of his just kind of comes up as such. Uh, he gets a bane chant off on these fiends at the bottom. And he's shooting in in his... Uh, <laughs> His combat, he actually rolls really, really well. Um, is it, uh, is if you don't know, a Horde of Fiends has something like 24 or 26 attacks or something. They hit on 4s, so you're looking at like 12 or 13 hits. And he should be wounding me on 4s, but he just he just rolled out of the box. And he actually almost killed my Greater Earth Elemental, but the reroll saved me, which was good. Um, his Shadow Hulk doesn't do that good, though. Yeah, he kind of fluffs, so he bounces off. And, and that's what it just looks like at the end of Night Stalker's turn. So, uh, Dwarf's turn three. A couple things happen in here. Um, for movement, um, way at the top there, you can see my 
Berserker Brox have charged the. He put his um, horror up there to chaff them up, um, so they couldn't charge the uh, worms. I don't know I would have or not, but anyway, just doing exactly what I do with other stuff. Uh, my Earth Elementals go back into the Shadow Hulk. Uh, my Greater Earth Elemental charges, counter charges the fiends at the bottom, and I move forward and pivot my Earth Elementals for a flank surge charge potential on that horde of fiends that we're talking about here. Uh, my Iron Guard and the Flame Cannons move up because I have a dog and I have some shots. So, that's a potential usage. Um, and you can kind of see here, and this picture's better, I park my um, I park my Ranger Captain in front of the uh, worms. Um, so that he can't charge my uh, Berserker Brock Riders after they take care of the uh, horror. So, uh, just getting in his way, obviously. Being, being a problem. So, um, the flank surge happens as you would expect. It was it was it would be pretty hard to fail. Uh, I bane chant this flame cannon because his shadow hulk is in range. Um, this is a little bit of a blurry picture, but I threw a dog and shot the shadow hulk. Did quite a bit of damage, but shadow hulks are like a twenty fearless or something. So, yeah, it's pretty hard to knock them out. Uh, over here, I don't do that great. Um, actually, I think I do pretty bad. And I only waver the um, fiends at the bottom. Although, in, in the same retrospect, fiends are like a 1720. So they have a pretty high nerve, too. But that's also to take note that is the headstrong fiends. So that's what it looks like if I bounce off there. Those earth elementals are not in a good spot. Um, of course, I, I route the... Uh, the the horror and my combination of berserker lord and earth uh, great earth elementals fails to kill the shadow hulk um i think they actually do kind of bad so uh we move into night stalker's turn four he makes his headstrong roll so it's goodbye greater earth elemental um you can see he double charges in the rear and in the flank for the earth elementals there so goodbye earth elementals um, he charges my ranger captain that's chaffing him up, as you would expect, and his shadow hulk goes into my earth elementals, and you can see here his planar apparition goes into one of my flame cannons, which is actually a pretty good move. I didn't, I didn't see it coming, um, because, you know, planar apparition is a kind of a good heal, heal bot, kind of a mixed thing, but it actually has four attacks, so he'll triple attacks. On my war machine, so should be pretty good. Uh, there's an action shot. Say goodbye to my greater earth elemental. Should probably try not to get people's pictures in this, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. Um, he bane chants his Chatter Hulk, so he stops whipping so bad on my earth elementals. Uh, he does some healing. I, I he didn't do so much healing, so I forgot to put in tags for it. But he heals his uh, his um, fiends there at the bottom for like a point or two of damage. And we go into combat, and not surprisingly, he routes my greater earth elemental. Reforms like this. Um, he he does a he routes my earth elementals naturally. Reforms like this. He routes my flame cannon, um, but he can't really do anything, so he just sits still afterwards. Uh, and his shadow hulk still just isn't picking up the slack, just kind of doing mediocre. Uh, back here, the the uh, brave brave ranger captain actually takes very little. Uh, well, it's a, yeah, it's average actually. He should have done an average ten damage. It's forty hits, hitting with twenty or forty forty attacks hitting with twenty. Then he's crushing strength one, so he's hitting yeah. So it should have been ten. So he was one under average. But anyway, he still got the ranger captain. So he reforms like this. So yep, he has not looked at that. So he picked up some stuff that turns so that helps out for him. Uh, dwarf's turn four. Uh, dwarf's turn four. The charges are as follows. My um, uh, ironclad regiment in the middle there charges his shadow hulk, which is fairly damaged. Um, at the top, I don't charge the worms. What I end up doing was taking my berserker lord and the brock riders into those fiends 
that he had shifted left that were behind the worms. Um, he he knew I could. I mean, he could see I could do this, but I mean, he didn't obviously say anything. But it was just a. It was just for me. It was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this because that way I can avoid the worms for a turn. Hopefully, I don't have a lot of faith that I would take the worms out in a turn, which is my with just my Brox. So uh, I did that and. Do, 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 do. I guess they, those Earth Elementals countercharge the uh, the um, Shadow Hulk. Yeah, and you can see down here, two Bane Chants go off, um, and my um, <laughs> my my Stone Priests go stand in the way of his Planar Apparition, so he can't he can't beat up my um, Flame Cannon. <laughs> so you know. Noble, noble sacrifices. So uh, one, one, yeah, two band chance. One on the, one on the flame cannon. One on the, um, the, the guys with the, the axes, the, the dwarfs, the, the iron guard. There we are. Um, so uh, shooting in, I route this, um, this, this horde was pretty, pretty damaged. So a band chant, band chanted round of shooting wasn't gonna, was gonna wipe them out pretty good. Uh, my dwarves don't do very good though. Um, I get this. Oh no, I just rolled really bad. Cause yeah, I get him up to. Looks like 15 points of damage is nice. Needed to roll a 5 plus twice, and I couldn't do it. So, that's life. Um, these dwarves, though, on the other hand, just annihilate uh, this horde of fiends on the charge, uh, which is awesome. So they can reform like that, which is, again, pretty awesome. Um, the only mistake I make here is I should have... I should have spun around or done something else with my berserker lord. Because with the way he's sitting right now, he's kind of not able to single pivot and do stuff. So that's just something to remember in the future. And my Earth Elementals finished out the Shadow Hulk. And my Earth Elementals, we finished out the Shadow Hulk, actually back up. Because um, if they back up, his worms then only have the... Um, the uh, dwarves to charge there at the iron guard at the bottom. So, yep, yep, that's what it looks like. Turn five, uh, turn five for the night stalkers. He double charges my iron guard at the bottom, uh, and then his fiends at the bottom there didn't have anything useful to do uh, because they couldn't. Well, he doesn't need them to kill those dwarves, and he couldn't charge anybody else. So they move like that. Um, and his planar apparition goes and stands in front of my earth elementals. So, yep, he uh, does some healing on his shadow hulk here, which again, I just forgot. And, and as it happens to happen at some point in time in the game, yeah, my opponent does 22 points of damage to these mighty dwarves, and on the reroll, he gets a double one. So, not the best mechanic in this game, but... I, you know, it happens, I guess. It's funny and, and occasionally interesting, but, I mean, these doors should have at least been wavered. But anyway. anyway. So, you know, that's good. So, it really leaves my opponent hanging out in the wood, uh, hanging out in the wind there, so, uh, going to doors turn five. Uh, doors turn five in the left there, you can see a charge of the horror. Um, my iron guard down there countercharged the, um, Shadow Hulk. Um, this is kind of a complicated picture. I'm showing that I shoot the planar apparition with my flame cannon that looks suspiciously like a regular cannon, um, and then I and then I surge my Earth Elementals into the planar apparition, and then this is just also showing the output of combat in which I rout the planar apparition, which is pretty sweet because it's a lot of points. Well, it's, it's a reasonable amount of points. Uh, the dwarves, not surprisingly, route the um, Shadow Hulk. They reform like this, and I, you can see my put my stone. Oh, I put my stone priest in front of those fiends at the bottom, just so that they're not going to do anything on turn six. Um, oh yeah, so here's showing this. I actually, this is now combat, and I route the planar apparition, thanks to the flame cannon's help. And overrun like that. And not surprisingly, my 
berserker Brock Riders kill kill them the horror makes two horrors for them in this game it's pretty good and look like this so the end of dwarfs turn five is looking like this pretty good for the dwarves um, a lot of his stuff's out of position or just blocked up because they failed uh, so turn six um, turn six he sends the um, worms into the uh, dwarves the iron guard there at the bottom the fiends charge the the um, stone priest and the uh, planar apparition up here comes and stands in front of my um, berserkers bark riders so just an action shot of the the brave stone priest he's actually stone priests are, are a pretty reasonably good road bump um, defense 5 and 11 13 you know you don't get to triple your attacks on them and it's just you know it's 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 not bad I, I still think they're way over costed but that's that's a different story um, so again just another shot of that I can see what he's done <laughs> he really whiffs on the stone priest um, he doesn't have any bane chance anymore because I killed all those guys so he he, he didn't actually do that far off from average he was like a couple below average and he ends up just wavering my stone priest um of course he routes he didn't roll double one so of course he routes that guy uh you can see my stone priest waver down there at the bottom so again that's just another pick of picture of uh six uh dwarves turn six uh my stone priest <laughs> passes his headstrong roll uh and and goes and runs away because he can make points um, which again, just, just terrible for my opponent because his fiends are out of position because they didn't get a kill and they didn't get a reform. So they're just facing over to nothing. So really perfect for me. Um, and my stone priest lived, so it was double funny. Um, I triple charge the worms with my greater earth elemental, my earth elementals and the berserker lord. And then I send the Brock riders into the front of of the planar apparition <laughs> yep uh, and then I, I bane chant my brock riders because they're going to have enough because they're going to be hitting on fives because it's the ensnare so they need as much help as they can get um, and then shooting I just the flame cannon's got nothing else to do so it shoots the uh, fiends just to see if it get you know funny or lucky or something so my brock riders go crazy um i think you, you you know you throw like 26 dice when these guys attack and i and i think i actually landed something like 18 like 15 to 18 hits or something it was just it was just ridiculous the number of fives and sixes i rolled um the worms on the other hand i didn't route the worms they survived um it was pushing it i mean i didn't have any doubled or tripled attacks and you know all that crushing Strength is just kind of well. I mean, everyone else's, I guess, is fine. But from the the greater Earth elemental is moot. So uh, there you go. end of turn six. We see if there's a turn seven. There is a turn seven. So nice duck is turn seven. Uh, he does the only couple of things he has left. He charges my flame cannon at the bottom, just for spite, and then he charges my um, counter charges my Earth elementals, which are the most damaged thing I have, which makes sense. So another shot of that. Um, I forgot the route, but of course he, he routes my flame cannon. And he routes my earth elementals. Which is fine. Uh, and this is showing my the dwarves turn 7. This is after movement. So um, what I did here, the only thing of to note is both of my stone priests moved into scoring. And what I did was the first thing I moved was... The other things, I moved my Berserker Brock Lord. I didn't charge with him. What I did was I moved him within an inch of the <clears throat> worms so that he would remain in scoring. And after the Berserker Brock Riders charge, they can only slide over until they touch the Berserker Lord. So they also remain in scoring. So they don't have to center up because they can't. So... Just a little note. Sometimes, like you know, it's really it's really easy to use individuals to help prevent charging centering from putting you out of position or putting you into the woods or a lot of things like that. So 
This way I can keep everybody in for scoring. Not that I needed it, but, you know, just a thing. So I wrote the worms. Everybody's in scoring. My opponent has nothing in scoring. The end of dwarfs, or the end of seven. So the result, yeah, it was a clear dwarf victory. We didn't bother counting it up. Um, thoughts, I mean, as, as, as always, it's super fun to play these guys. Um, I like getting in games whenever I can. Uh, and I think the Night Stalkers are, are a really interesting thing to play against. Um, the using your inspiring is always something to watch. Um, you know, traditional non-magic shooting is kind of a, a tough thing to pull off. Um, they typically have a higher nerve. It's just a it's just a different thing to play against. Um, yeah, double ones always seems to come at the worst possible time. Like, I don't know. That was just really, really unfortunate for my opponent. Um, but, I mean, luck was kind of all over the place. But, anyway. Now, Brock, Brock Riders are super awesome. Um, I'm going to finish up two more for this. Well, I'm, I'm building them in troops. So, three three guys to a troop. But you, you can back them up like I'm doing to make a regiment. And I'll probably do a whole other regiment. Um, I just haven't decided what I'm going to have them ride. I, I'm not a huge fan of the Brocks that come in the box. These are these are the Mantic Brock Rider bodies, but they're not the the Brocks. I just, I, they just look so static and kind of boring. Like they don't look like they're moving. They're just kind of standing. And anyway, anyway, so I, I make these current ones with some beetles from Reaper, but that's that's one point. Um, I, I do think this is a this was a bit of a bad matchup for my opponent in general. Um, I. He he's not so much faster than me that I can't react or have to give double charges up. And I have a lot of breath in this army. So breath and dogs. So it's just yeah. I think he did okay. He got a little clustered up, but I got a little clustered up too. But in the end it's just knocking knocking down defense six walls without that bane chant is rough. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I know it's been a while since I've done a battle report. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good time gaming. Goodbye.